Do you think you remember what your lines are? Yeah. You're going to say rub a dub dub, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say flub a dub dub. Mm, it's thanks for the grub. Shoot. We should practice that. Okay. We, we don't have time. We got to go live now. So okay. rub a dub dub. Thanks for the grub. <laughs> gentlemen welcome to relax retro talk we are back baby Woo! it's always a bonus when we can make a, a podcast the schedules line up you know the 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 planets the align, align if you will yeah, yeah absolutely and uh and then we can come here and complain about things and uh just you know discuss our about... childhoods and complain yeah about that is that is the, that is the real focal point <laughs> but i know i know you kind of you kind of pre you were like, okay, this is what we're gonna we're gonna add this into the podcast yeah, yeah. today, and I was like, that's gonna go some dark places, but um, it's also gonna be positive because mm-hmm. I I mean I don't know, do you have like sound effects for like we were right? I don't know, I don't know, uh, but yeah, we're gonna start off talking about kind of the the almost like the fall, I guess, of Square Enix. That's what's uh, happening, yeah. To where they are in real now. time, in real time, in real time. Happening. There's a there's a lit- there's like one of those meters. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as it's like slowly going down, they're like, "Come on, buy some more games." And then you've got those five those five guys on Reddit. Are they like, if everyone buys a hundred copies, then we'll be fine. It'll be successful. Don't worry, you'll you should buy a hundred because Square Enix made a good game back in 1998. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Final Fantasy VIII. Hmm. That's true. It's so hard not to point I, not... over here because usually that's where my cam is. But, but yeah. So uh, for those of you that have no idea what we're talking about, um, Square Enix. I mean, first of all, still hasn't posted the sales of yeah. Seven Rebirth, which mm-hmm. I mean, they've been they any time they release a game, they always like post this once it hits like a million yeah. to brag about it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They haven't posted any of that stuff. They're being no. pretty hush hush about it. And understandably so, but let's see. Uh, so I got, I got the reports in front of me. The official reports. <laughs> this just in. This just in. Breaking news. Uh, <laughs> projected sales were around four hundred to five hundred billion yen. So, okay. uh, so what that is is. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 they were do, like, do. we made this game, and we expect we're going to make this much money for it. Yes. Yes. So, let's see. Oh, no, let's go with profit. Let's go with profit instead of Profit, instead of profit makes sense. Yeah. So, instead of... So, their, their projected profit was 60 to 70 billion yen. Okay? 60 okay. to 70 okay. billion yen was the projected profit. Um, actual profit... Or, or, or let's retail, say right? let's say let's convert that first. So, uh, so six so seventy billion yen is four hundred and forty eight million U S dollars. Okay, that's a lot of cash. So that's what their projected profit. That's a couple was. bucks. That's a couple bucks. And then actual profit. So remember, sixty to seventy billion projected actual mm-hmm. three thirty two point five billion. Ooh, so not even half. Not even half. Maybe no, it's not half, because <laughs> when you convert it to U.S. dollars, that's two hundred and eight million. So, I, so I mean, that's still a lot of money, right? Well, it is. It's not. It's not like they didn't sell any. Yeah, but they didn't get anywhere near what they were expecting. Exactly, and and the kicker here is this is fiscal year, and their fiscal year ended. It was I think it was the end of March or something like that. So it it was either beginning of March or end of March. Uh, either way, it it ended up that uh, Rebirth was part of this fiscal year, 
Okay. Um, and I think it was like Final Fantasy 16 and like Forspoken were the previous mm. fiscal year. Forspoken was so bad. And Forspoken and in last and the previous year did better than the, than this one. Well, I mean, so so it we said insane. we I had I had talked to I can't remember if it was the last podcast or the one before, but I had specifically said, listen, the numbers for rebirth should be lower than remake. Oh, yeah. And the reason for that is because people like me bought remake thinking that it was what it was supposed to be. Uh, well, as advertised, a remake. And you get you get one of those out of me, right? Yeah. So when they announced rebirth, I was like, "Okay, I'm listening. How is it going to be?" And they were like, "Oh, it's not going to be anything like remake was, except it's a bunch of side quests and the ghosts, the plot ghosts are back and don't worry, Everything comes together at the end. Spoiler. <laughs> it, it doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it, it was it was just a big flop. And so people like me who love OG Final Fantasy VII, I have no interest in that game. I've got no interest in playing mm -hmm. that game because it, ha it, it puts nothing on the plate for me. Exactly. Right? I will probably jump on board with that game sometime down the road when it comes to Steam and I can get it for like, 80% off. Yeah. And then I'll play it, right? But I mean, I, I I'm not lining up to pay $100 for that game. No. That is not a $100 game in my opinion. And I think that that should be the wake-up call for Square Enix. It's not going to be, but I think that should be the wake-up call for Square Enix where I, they take I, a they take an absolute guaranteed home and run. Whole, yeah, home no and doubt. Run. Hole in run. Hole in hole run. In run. run. <laughs> I was trying to say home run and hole in one and crush them together. <laughs> it's a hole in run. Slam in run. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, they had they had an absolute guaranteed home run with remaking Final Fantasy VII if they would have just left it alone. Right. Mm -hmm. If they would have not added in all of the extra stuff that changing the story and doing all that, if they yeah. would have just re-released the game. And a lot of people are like, oh, we played that game a billion times. Well, you haven't played this one where they have updated the graphics. Look, change changing the battle system. I'm OK with that even, too. I would have been perfectly fine with that if they would have left the story alone. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you change the story, you change the game. It's not the same game anymore. Exactly. So now it's a different game with Final Fantasy VII sticker put on top on the mm -hmm. on the title card. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm not interested in that. So to throw, not only for me would it have been just 100 bucks for the game, but I would have had to buy a PS5, which I would have done if it would have been an actual Final Fantasy VII remake. I would have actually, that would have been well, a time yeah, I would no have on board with the PS5. So I think not only is Square Enix losing out here, but that's where Sony's losing out too. Yeah, absolutely. Because they've got the exclusivity rights and thought yeah. it was going to be a big system seller. And obviously she ain't. Unfortunately not. It, I think it was also it was outsold by Final Fantasy 16 too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, Final Fantasy yeah. 16 outsold it. Which is like I and it's funny. I I love I'm sorry uh Final Fantasy subreddit to call you out twice in one uh podcast. But the but the subreddit all of a sudden flipped. They were like 16's the best game they ever released. Blah, 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 blah. And then 17 Rebirth started coming out. They're like 16 sucks. Buy 17. Buy or buy uh 17. 7 Rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that's basically what it is. Yeah. But buy buy 7 Rebirth. It's so much better than 16. And then there was this infighting of people who were like, "No, 16's great. No, 16's terrible." Mm -hmm. And then now it's like, "Well, those of you that said 16's terrible, but 7 Rebirth is great. Well, uh, I don't know. The numbers kind of don't really lie about yeah. that. It sounds like it sounds like they're both not great games. Well, I know even like a lot of people that were all hyped on sixteen, are, like are even they're saying like sixteen was pretty forgettable. Like yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. The only people so I do have a few people who are like this game was fantastic, and I always have one follow up question for them. I, I, they're like, oh, Final Fantasy sixteen, what a fantastic game. I'm like. Did you like the Devil May Cry games? They're like, oh yeah, big Devil May well, Cry yeah, fan. I was like, obviously, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. It makes sense that you like Final Fantasy 16 because it's basically a Devil May Cry game. Yeah, it's not a Final Fantasy. Um, it would have been great as a as a spinoff, honestly. Like, I, I think so. I enjoyed Stranger Danger, like uh, yep. Stranger of Paradise, for what it was. Yep. I think yep. if they would have done the same thing, mm -hmm. it's fine because I mean, at least that way, it's a it's a side piece kind of thing, yeah. right? I would like them to do a 
because like we got like Dragon Quest Heroes one and two, we got Hyrule Heroes. I would mm-hmm. like them to do a Final Fantasy one. Heck, you know what? I would like them to do a Dragon Quest Final Fantasy crossover like Heroes. That game. would be really cool. That would be fucking awesome. You have yeah. like all the good guys and like and then the villains and stuff, and then some of the villains you could like recruit to play as yourself. That would be stuff. really really that would be dope. awesome, dude. I love those I guess, kinds of games. For some I reason. guess the th- the thing for me that I don't understand about Square Enix is how they can look at the success of Dragon Quest XI and then go, nobody wants JRPGs anymore. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, like, even like Yaku- it... the new Yakuza games are selling like hotcakes. I mean. Like, how is how can you look at those games and the success that they have mm-hmm. and be the, the JRPG? Yeah. Be the JRPG. When someone says, hey... I want to play a JRPG. That's likely going to be the series you're going to be recommended. How could you look at those other JRPGs and be like, nah, we don't need to do that anymore. Right? Like, I I get it that it probably takes a lot of work. And I get it that um, it's probably really expensive and it takes a lot of time. You think it'd be easier to make. That's that's the secret to making good video games. Uh, You'd think it would be easier to make a turn-based JRPG than it would... uh, I think like I think it would be slash. I think it would be uh, mechanically easier to make that game, but I think as far as it goes to like ensure that the story's good and make sure like all of that piece right, and all the other long components. games, yeah, right? okay. they're long, and so like uh, they take a long time to do like all your testing and to do all of that extra stuff, like all of that compared to like Final Fantasy VII Fortnite. Right, yeah. like I mean, you could crap those games out like this. Yeah, and true. if if you're as long as you're breaking even or making a little bit on top of breaking even, then where's the incentive to put the time and resources into a game that you might not break even? That's going to take up the entire time. I yeah. get it from a business sense, but that's the problem with this, with the gaming industry as a whole. Right, you're seeing it literally across the across the gambit mm-hmm. of all these companies that are like. Don't worry, we'll make our quarter. Don't worry, shareholders, we'll make you money. And then all now of a they're sudden, not really though. The brand is just gone. Well, <laughs> they're I, not. I, I, I think what happened is people started finally getting enough, which is mm-hmm. it's a it's amazing. It took this long to no get to that doubt. Point, right? Yeah. Like this is this is way past the line. The line was way back there. Yeah. For people to jump off on on, on this, but I think people are finally starting to wake up and be like, you know what? This isn't okay anymore. I yeah. I don't I don't want to spend thirty dollars on a on a cosmetic skin. There's a lot of people who want to spend thirty dollars on a cosmetic <laughs> skin. Don't don't think for a second that that's dead. Yeah. But I think I think what's happening is the 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 large scale gaming industry. We've been talking about this a long time on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The large scale gaming industry went very corporate. And they went shareholders, and they're like, no, we're going to make money, and money is the most important thing. It's not about the game. It's not about the art, et cetera. And then the indie games started coming up, and the, and the money shifted. The money left the people in the corporate area and came down to the indies, right? Yeah. Look at the ones uh, from – what's the one that uh, Donkey's crew just Animal put Animal Well. Animal Well. Yeah. Look how amazing that game is going. For 20 bucks, yeah. that person is – a, a millionaire. And it's just one dude did right? everything. It's just, it's just a guy. Yeah. Right? Well, even like when I, Celeste kind of came out too, right? Celeste, it was like the same thing. Stardew Valley. Stardew right? Valley. Uh, like, not that Helldivers oh, oh. was one guy, but Helldivers was a small, very Hell, small Helldivers team. was a very small. Helldivers 2. Small team. And Sony tried to do their thing there's a yeah, bunch of stuff going on with that situation i mean too. but it, again it's it's just uh, that's another example everybody of a, just of trying a, to get their hands into the everyone pool, wants right? to get their hands dirty yeah. i i said this to a group of friends that, uh, that i play hell divers with um just wait a year maybe two years they're likely all in development right now but you'll see a halo hell divers oh absolutely Helldivers, just like with the whole divers. yeah fortnite PUBG, thing right like it's fortnite. all it's, yeah. it's just Battle it'll Royale it'll be mode. the next thing right yeah. that's what will happen is you'll see that and that i mean that's a good thing uh yeah yeah way. you get a variety on the genre but, kind of thing i mean i don't know i'm i'm just yeah i i just i'm always waiting for just something new and yeah. it's the indie companies that are coming up with the the stuff that's actually yeah really they're they're do they're breaking all the ground for sure yeah. like everything they do is like the groundbreaking stuff yeah. shit what was there was another one i was trying to think of that was an indie game that was like one guy and it was just phenomenal but i can't think of it off the top there's of there's head. so there's so many i yeah, mean pixel noir are. is a good one too pixel right noir, like noir yeah so that many one good ones. dynamite just there's so there's just so many great indie games that um 
and because there's so many of those indie games too, there's no reason people are running to do their hundred dollar games for triple A titles. Exactly. Right? And like, for and for people who are listening and are like confused when we say hundred dollars, here in Canada, a, a yeah. brand new game is like ninety. Eighty nine ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. Eighty nine ninety nine plus on tax. Top of that. It's about it's about hundred bucks. bucks. Total. So, so it becomes an investment at that point, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't, I don't look if the game's good, I'll buy it. Yeah. Some, Grand some Theft Auto, games are worth it. Not very many, but some Grand Theft Auto six, I will probably buy that game. I, I don't buy games day one. So I'll, the best I'll give you is a probably Gundam breakers four. That's going to be coming out. Probably going to buy that game. I don't even know if right? I will. I don't know. No, I want, I don't know. I'm going to wait. That's all. I'm going to wait like not a, a day month. one. <laughs> not a day one. Got to wait wait like a month, dude. We yeah, got they, so they really, badly burnt on New Gundam They Gun really burned us on in New Gundam Breakers. But I will say, though, 4 does look like... Oh, it looks like back. the classic ones. Yeah, it looks yeah. like Gundam Breaker 3, which is why I'm like, okay, I'm probably jump on board with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But, but that, that's the thing, right? Like, it's... I don't know. That when was we, a bait switch, about, too. Kind of like seven, really was. 7 Remake, right? It really was. When we talk about Square Enix and the titles that they have out, I ha- I'm, I've been waiting, right? Take out the Dragon Quest series because that seems to be their only actual consistent, successful, yeah. consistently successful uh, path, and it's consistently successful because of the fan base and the creator behind yeah, it, right? Exactly. Like they still like, have the like same that, core. Correct. Like well, you got that little bubble. There's only one guy gonna, left now, but it's, yeah, it's gonna take it's gonna take that bursting, and then you're gonna have a real problem on your hands when yeah. But when I think I think so many of the developers that have been working with like Yuji Horii are so like intertwined with the series now yeah. too that they know they get what makes a dragon quest right yeah. whereas i feel like the guys that have are ma- have been making final fantasy since like even 12 really like 12 mm-hmm. was really good but it was so different oh yeah um, but even even since like 12 or spe- especially like well, 13 and on i don't think they get what makes a final no. fantasy right they're so mixed with the kingdom hearts crew now right yeah like, they're, they're just, basically the same fucking crew it's it's really really tough and i mean and like uh, look i i get it some people love the uh the crazy like going way out into left field yeah from yeah, where yeah. We are. some people really dig that but that's I think a separate that, it should be a separate thing i think that you should make a different game then right yeah like everybody's always like oh we don't want to play jrpgs anymore we won't play this well then go make your own game dude mm-hmm. like leave this one alone this game it's like saying you know what call of duty is not going to be a first person shooter anymore now it's going to be a strategic top down uh, rts mobile. but anyways yeah so to me like I, I was talking about this on my stream uh last week i think kind of like how the uh honestly like square enix or even like the jrpg when the downfall really started and it, it feels mm-hmm. like the ps2 era was kind of the start of that because right you did have like games like dragon quest 8 where you still had like a fully explorable world and yep. like to me being connected to the game's world and like lore to that to that degree is like a big part of what draws you into that world and makes you feel like more connected um yeah but now like even like like most jrpgs especially like modern ones are very like you're lucky to have more than like three towns you know what i mean yeah. like yeah there's a lot of copy and paste yeah but no no i mean like three in total in the game Oh, like literally three yeah towns. it's been a while since i played i haven't played any of the new jrpgs none of them have seemed appealing yeah so from final fantasy 13 on i haven't touched any of the of the jrpgs i'm going to come up to them yeah right but i mean like i stopped at final fantasy 10 i played maybe an hour of final fantasy 12 i couldn't even tell you anything about it i don't remember anything at all yeah but i mean i i there was a point in my in my life where i kind of moved away from jrpgs Mm -hmm. just because i wasn't getting the same out of them right they never reached that same peak that seven eight nine did for me right yeah yeah and there's i don't know that whole era like having a big vast world to explore like the only games that are doing that now, to my knowledge, is Dragon Quest and Xenoblade yeah. Chronicles. Yeah, Those well, are the I mean, only games with like a big, and even Xenoblade, there's not like a lot of towns and stuff. But no, they, they exactly. have the exploration there. Like, yeah, they absolutely. I think nail it there. I think the games started getting really confused and thinking that they have to be MMOs, right? Yeah, because that's kind of what ended up happening. Is that they they started i think they went too far then they they were like no we got to make these massive worlds where there's continents and different places mm-hmm. and we got to do all this instead of like and not easily be... traversable 
Right. Or, or like should... select, like teleport traversal, which I exactly. hate. Exactly. Instead yeah. of like free like I... airship roaming and stuff. I think Final Fantasy seven, eight, and nine really did it the best, mm -hmm. right? Like the the concept of it is an open world. Right. And 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 previous as well. Six did it, four did it, five yeah, did it. Like they, yeah. they all did it. But I mean the concept of yes, it is an open world, but it has a linear path. Yeah, and that's you what don't makes have a JRPG to follow it. so great to me. Right? You don't have to follow it, but there's an obvious linear path to go from this town to this town, mm -hmm. from this town to this town. You do these things all along the way. You build your characters up, and you complete the game. Where they're at now, it's like plot. There you go. Uh, go, go out and explore. Yeah. And then it's and then it gets filled with side quests because then the designers have to go. Okay, here's we our have critical to have a path. reason for this. Exactly. Here's our critical path of all the quests that you've got to do. And, but we can't just build this one town and have you do this one thing here. I know. Let's make you fetch 17 different kinds of carrots when you get here. Yeah. Right? And then by that point, it's just like, oh, you're just so burned out by yeah. all these stupid it's side quests. It's padding, man. Like, forget it. I don't want to do any of I'd that. I'd rather have a tight thing and move on. Look at, like, Chrono Trigger and stuff like that in Final mm -hmm. Fantasy IV, right? I'd rather have a tight... Uh, 20 to 25 hour game 100% than a padded out 60 hour game yeah. any fucking day 100% any day yeah it does long doesn't make a good game right no. like just because it's long doesn't make it good no. right it could be good yeah yeah sometimes yeah. you need it to be long to tell your story but i think if you've got to pad it to to exactly. tell your story then you're doing something wrong right mm -hmm. you should be able to just do the critical path of quests and complete the game no problem yeah doing the side quest should be something you want to do oh yeah. i want to do these side quests so that i can build my guy up stronger so that i can unlock all of the things learn so that or I can learn whatever. more about these characters right like your right. party members Not, and side characters it shouldn't be like i that. can't move on until i collect all these carrots because well the gate won't open until the carrot yeah. guard opens dude and that was why i hated fucking torna like that that mm -hmm. one xenoblade uh kind of DLC, dlc slash side game it was. It made the side quests mandatory, and I was like, oh, and I, that "It's such." Made me so then mad. at that point, it's not a side quest anymore. Exactly. It's a main main line quest, making me go and get these stupid yeah. carrots. I feel like I feel like modern JRPGs, other than like yeah, like I said, Dragon Quest, and for the most part, Xenoblade. It's like they can't find that happy medium. You're either on a hallway yep. straight through with no time to like explore and like find your way in the world or it's like all right it's wide open here you go but yeah there's only one town like it's just i don't know it's such a mess right now it, it, but it's a disaster i will say that square enix has obviously leaned learning from it finally because they're mm -hmm. doing a bunch of restructuring they're they're ax axing a bunch of these low cost low budget games to focus which is on, great yeah to focus on their main their main yeah. series and stuff yeah. and put their put their resources into finishing games like Dragon Quest yeah. 12 and all these exactly. new upcoming titles. I th I think there's always hope, right? Like I don't yeah. make it mean to make it sound like the like I guess it's over, Square Enix is done. No. They're not done. They're always going to be making games, but the thing is that that you're right. Like they need to be focusing in on the stuff that is their bread and butter. Absolutely. You're going to make Final Fantasy 7 uh, Final Fantasy 16, then make it the best fucking final fantasy that you could possibly make it mm -hmm. you're gonna make final fantasy 7 remake then give us the remake don't give us whatever the crap this is yeah i don't i don't want to do six hours of costa de soul um uh side quests no it wasn't shit. fun in final fantasy 7 to sit around in costa de soul yeah you get true. in you do your thing and you, then you move on like i why do why would i want to sit around here and play beach volleyball that's stupid yeah it's because then I mean, I they can sell you beach volleyball but then they can sell you another 90 dollar game for yep. the next it's part. just so it's just so ridiculous i don't know how they're gonna do um like two discs basically in the next release i I don't. I, I really don't see it happen. I think the people who are left on still buying the game are the ones that are going to buy it no matter what. Yeah. And so it might not be two discs. It might be twenty. It yeah, might be. Who the fuck knows, it, right? it might might be endless They've amounts of short them along level DLC. Far. Well, and that's just it. Like at this point, I think they've proven that they're going to buy anything no matter what. So they might just be like, you know what? We're not actually going to release the whole game. We're just going to sell you the DLC for Rebirth. And it will just add the next chapter. Yeah, and you just buy that for awful. $40 a piece. That'd there you go. Awful. You can have as much game as you want. No I problem. Can see it. I, think, I think they're trying to dial away from that too, though. Because like they've seen... I hope they are. 
they've seen like remember when like chocobo gp came out on the switch yeah. and it was like the worst fucking experience it was ever. really bad and like i didn't buy it but i did watch you play it yeah i bought it and i like returned it the same day and like man just like so many little projects like that that they put zero effort into and like it was just so fucking predatory. They're just trying to make money. Yeah. That's what they're, they're just Awful, want. That's dude. at the end of the day, that's what they want to do. And I get it. They're a company. That's what they want to do is make money. But before they wanted to make games that made money, right? Yeah. Now they just want to make money. It doesn't matter how they're going to release a mobile game. They're going to give you, you know, virtual gambling. It's just, uh, it sucks to see. They're, they're one of many of these big AAA groups that has massively fallen from grace. Yeah, dude. It's just, I don't know. It's an absolute uh, disaster, and it's unfortunate that that it's got this far. But I am glad that it seems like they're finally uh, learning from it. So absolutely. Um, but we can now return to the heyday of 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 Square Enix when they were still kind of in their prime on the PS2. So mm -hmm. I'll start with my first ever encounter with the PS2. Like I knew it was coming out, but I didn't really know much about it. Mm -hmm. I was also it's coming. I was also that guy that like I always got the consoles like way after like mm -hmm. basically when the next generation was coming out was when I would get my consoles usually. And I yeah. think the PS2 was probably the first console that I kind of got at like the year or maybe the year after it came out instead of like the nine nine ninety nine. I think that was Dreamcast. that was Dreamcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like I my first experience with the uh, PS2. So my cousin, my uncle, and like cousins and stuff, they always had like a shitload of money. So I would always experience like a lot of my first consoles at their place or right. because of them. Like when when I played like the Sega 32X for the first time, it was at their place and stuff like that, right? So for Christmas, we were at my grandparents. And my cousin actually brought, he just got a PS2 for Christmas that year. So he brought his PS2 there. And the only game he had was, I think it was called Kessin 2. And oh, it's really? like, uh, have you heard of it or no? Never. No okay, idea. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like Dynasty Warriors, but it's more like an RTS, but you get to watch okay. the battles happen. Oh, weird. Yeah. Okay. And, and it was That's like a strange first game. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as a game to play, it was fucking terrible. Not something that like <laughs> I would enjoy at all, but right. just seeing like hundreds of soldiers, like going to war, like in real time, it right. just like blew my mind. Right. Cause they were like fully 3d. The graphics were fantastic, especially for the time. And that was, that was a, my first experience with the PS2. And I thought it was like the, the craziest thing ever and then the next time was my other cousins had a ps2 and they had i think it was just a demo of it but they had metal gear solid 2 they had like a demo okay. of metal gear solid 2 and it's like the tanker mission and man dude i remember this was the first time that i saw gameplay or a or a cutscene in a video game and i and thought to myself wow Games can never get more real than this. This is this is it. Yeah, this is this peak is, performance. I, I literally can't tell between this and real life right now. <laughs> and it was like Metal Gear Solid Two, and that was that was what sold me was honestly Metal Gear Solid Two because right. and I wasn't even like a big Metal Gear like I, I liked Metal Gear on the NES. I had played the the crap out of that with my buddy Paul, and then I never played another. I played Paul had Metal Gear Solid One, and I didn't like Metal Gear Solid One. Okay. Um, but Metal Gear Solid 2 was just, like, so good. And I, I feel like that's definitely what drove me to get a PS2 and was, like, one of my first PS2 games that I owned was Metal Gear Solid 2. Nice. So what was that's your fantastic. first experience I, and, and well, what led you to get a PS2? So I, yeah, I also jumped onto the PS2 late in the game cycle. I probably got my PS2 2003 Oh, okay. 2002, oh yeah yeah you got yours late yeah but it when, would have been when way did, late when did you like play it for the first time though or see mm, it well, my older brother had a ps2 my my older brother was the type of person who would pick game consoles up like immediately right so but we we both had xbox so we both bought an xbox when they dropped and i had my my xbox was pretty close to launch not exactly oh, on launch but okay. pretty close um, and so, um, I had, I had played the PS2 here and there. 
Uh, but it was it was his it was his game. I'm trying to think what or his console. I wonder what game he was into wrestling games and racing and stuff like oh, that. Okay. So um, remember those uh, ATV off road fury yeah, games? Yeah, those games. Those were a games lot were of fun. so good on the PS2. So good. Um, and I think everybody owned at least one of those. games. I think so. Like, well, I mean, it was day. there was a pack in at one point. I think it could have been. I think it was. Yeah. But um, I ended up, I was saying this off before we started. So I've ended up buying my PS2 off of some chick, some girl that I don't even know how I got in touch with this person because we didn't cross paths. But... She literally drove up. We were like going, we were walking yeah. or biking or something. Yeah. And, and she drove up and like stopped her car next to us. Yeah. And so Might did have been I a buy in that head. moment? Did I buy in that moment? Was she like, do you guys want to buy a PS2? You were like, Pfft. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's I think that's how I think it you happened. said like how much because I was trying to remember. Right. And she and then she was like, how much do you have on you? I was like, I don't know, 20 bucks. She was yeah, like, that's, what it was. that's what it was. I'm pretty sure that's how it was. And I was like, there's no way this this works. But I gave 20 bucks. I got yeah. my PS2 Um, and it was the console with uh, no there was no controller. So it was the console, the power cable and the AV adapter. And that was it. Right. And I was like, OK, well, whatever. And so I brought it home. But because the PS1 dual shocks work perfectly fine on ps2 right i think so um, i can't remember I, i'm pretty maybe. sure it was either that or the other way around either way i got my hands on a ps2 controller plugged it in open up the game well or open up the the console well there's a copy of fifa like 2000 Whatever or something there. yeah <laughs> i was like guess we're a soccer fan now <laughs> right because that was the only game you had it was the only game bit. i had because um, it came it was like it, it came forgotten it. in the console yeah yeah so anyway, I mean, that would have been the first game that I played on my own PS2 console. Um, NFL Blitz, though. NFL Blitz and N uh, NFL Street were oh. the two games that I played the most on my PS2. I loved NFL Street, man. That game was so much fun. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Pro Skater 2? Pro Skater 1? It might have remember. been like Underground or something. Cause Underground? One I can't remember. PS1. That that point in my life is such a fuzzy mess yeah right because like two that that like 2000 to 2006 period i was like graduated high school went to college graduated college mm -hmm. so i mean like there's i don't remember a whole heck of a lot during that period of time but there was um a bit of alcohol there's a little bit of uh, having a fun <laughs> time in there. but the uh it, it was it was a lot of fun, right? Like the I did pick up Final Fantasy X. I played it. Oh, I enjoyed yeah. it. I never finished it. I thought this the sphere grid was like super daunting, right? Like and overwhelming uh, I, kind of thing. it is so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But I mean, once you start using once it, you, you get start used to it, yeah. it, right? Um, but I mean, that was that was kind of it. And then other than that, I didn't really have a whole lot for the PS2. I still have my original PS2. It is in that in that shelving unit over there, the actual right. thing that I had. Um, along with a copy, I think, of Beautiful Joe, I think I have uh, as well. Dude, I remember your younger brother, like, Bob's, was a big Beautiful Joe fan. It's funny story. It's his copy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dude, so a lot of my uh, PS2 game experience that wasn't, like, in my niche was yep. your younger brother, Bob's. Because, like, yep. he was, like, he was, like, that big, like, 3d platformer ps2 guy yeah right yeah. whereas i was like jrpgs and like i don't even know what the fuck else i played metal gear um fighting games that was when i was like kind of yeah. in that fighting game You're kick again king of fighters yeah yeah a lot yeah. of the king of Our, fighter games i remember you playing a whole lot of metal gear solid 2 like yeah. a ton of metal gear solid 2 and the second one where yeah. you play as the guy with half a mouth and a sword in his mouth oh right yeah, that that's guy. the that's that's uh is that's that the same Metal game? Solid 2. See, yeah, I mean that, that's what I remember. <laughs> yeah. Metal Gear Solid Two <laughs> and uh, Metal Gear Solid Three. Yeah. I played so much back then. I remember being able to beat. It, I think it was three. I used to be able to beat it in. I think it was like two hours or three hours. No or kidding. Yeah, Holy. you had to skip all the cutscenes, obviously. But yeah, right, right. yeah. But I would still. just like I would be like I remember because like me and that was after you had graduated, right? So I started hanging out with your younger brother all the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I remember I would go over there and I'd be like, "Watch this! I could beat it in three hours." Or two hours or whatever, and we would just play it, and like f I would just beat the whole like the game, play through the whole story, <laughs> in like it's one sitting, which is crazy. That's amazing. But it's like because I, it. I played it so much that I just had every I I knew like what to get, where to get it, what to do right. next, like just off by heart at the time, right? 
Yeah. Um, the P- PS2 was was an absolutely bombshell system, right? Yeah. It's the it's the epitome when I think of like how game companies did their next gen correctly. I often think of the PS1 to PS2. So the PS2 yeah. was basically a PS1 that was fully more powerful, back, fully backwards compatible. Fully backwards compatible. You could use all the hardware, you could use the memory cards, you could use everything. So you did not need your PS1 anymore. Yeah. You could replace it with the PS2. And they yeah. tried to do it with the PS3 and then they ended up going like, "You know what? Forget all of that. Yeah. And they ended up pulling the the the, the backwards compatibility. compatibility. Yeah. You could still right? play PS1 games on the PS2. Yeah. Which but is like, weird. It, it, they, it, they did such a good job with the PS2. That was something that I was like, yes. It was their first system that was online with the use of a broadband adapter that you yep. could buy and put onto the back of it. You could play SOCOM and Call of Duty oh, 3. Yeah. SOCOM was really what put like took off with that. That was their hey, main was multiplayer kind of two. flagship. I yep. remember Paul had um, Final Fantasy XI, and he killed two PS2s because he would just let them run 24 <laughs> seven and you could just, just burn them out. Yeah, dude. And I remember, so the second one he killed, Oh, was it when we were living together? Like, I think he was still playing it then after I graduated. And right. I just remember like you could, you'd go in like his bedroom and you could just hear the PS2 fan. Like it was <laughs> so loud, dude. Yeah. He just burned him up, but he played the shit out of that game. He's still playing that. I think. Yeah, I'm he is. Sure he said he's, he's actually still playing it. Yeah. Him and his, fr- him and one of, uh, one or two of his friends that, uh, have been playing the game forever are basically making a private server with yeah. all the things they want and, all- and getting rid of all the stuff that they don't want. Yeah. So, Which is, I mean, that's, that's a testament to, uh, a good much? game. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who like really enjoys Loves it, right? Loves that game, but but uh, it yeah. was nice, yeah. Because uh, getting back to the previous point, um, so I'm not a 3D platformer guy, right? No. So I didn't get to, I didn't really experience. I wouldn't have, I guess, experienced any of those like 3D platformers and stuff. But your younger brother, uh, he had like all the Ratchet and Clank games. Mm-hmm. All the, he had like all the Sly Cooper. Um, yeah. What else? Jack and the, Daxter. Jack and Daxter, like all those games. And I and it was really cool because I got to see all of those. Uh, he also loved Beautiful Joe. Um, mm. I remember uh, there was like remember was it called Stunt Man? I remember you played that uh, a yep. lot. Too. Yeah, there was a Stunt Man driver. Driver. Yeah, the last driver game I think was on PS2. Yeah. Um, and then. Fuck! What was it? Oh, is that's I think where the was that where the Burnout series started was PS2. Burnout I think so. was on PS2. Yeah, it yeah. was. Like there yeah. were so many. I think the PS2, like that generation, like even I'm going to include Xbox and GameCube in there as well, mm-hmm. and and Dreamcast of course, is the last generation where games were made to be fun. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Like you yeah. had these great story driven games, but you also had these games that were just made to be a blast to play. Just fun. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't yeah. take their stuff too seriously. They weren't like, we need to spend $50 billion on this game so it looks like the most realistic thing ever. No, they just wanted the game to be fucking fun. And exactly. that's what really mattered at that time. And we don't really get a lot of that at all yeah. nowadays. Yeah. You had, uh, speaking of good games, you had God of War. Oh, yeah. Silent, was, Silent Hill 2. Then. Um, and Resident Evil 4 were all PS2 games. Right. Shadow of the Colossus and Ico. Dude, I did not like those games. I <laughs> never actually... I, so it's funny. I have copies of them for my PS3. Never played them. Oh, I have. Uh, I they're bought supposed Shadow, to be amazing. But. I, bought, I bought Shadow of the Colossus because everyone like hyped that get the game off to the moon. Uh, everyone has told me how amazing of a game it yeah, is. Yeah, and it is the most boring shit. So like it's just like it's like if you have like an open world with nothing yeah. in it and there's like yeah. there's like not the only thing that's in it is like eight boss fights. It's like one of the first uh one of the first Souls games. Basically, except the boss fights are like literally the same thing eight times. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> I hated it so much. I, what what about uh the dawn of Guitar Hero? Oh yeah, that's where that started kicking that's off. That's where too, that started. Hey? Guitar Hero yeah, started there. Way I'm pretty back sure it started then. on the PS2. It absolutely did. 
um, both Guitar Hero and Guitar Hero 2. And then I think after that, they went to the next system, the PS3, the Xbox 360. But I do remember my older brother having both Guitar Hero 1 and Guitar Hero 2. Yeah. For and, the PS2. And he was like, he because he was like a, a guitar player and stuff like that. And he was mm. one of the first people, like before Guitar Hero got big, I remember him being amped up about Guitar Hero and like... I, I remember he brought it home, dude. He brought home Guitar Hero, and I was like, the hell is that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) He has a plastic guitar, his DDR with a guitar, and then it was like like 30 minutes later, and I'm like... Yeah. But it's like, it's crazy, because like, you saying that, like, people now don't realize, like, like oh, now, now Guitar Hero is fucking huge, right? Like it was huge well, at that time. It, but when it, it first it came up, hard. yeah, yeah, it's it's not now. It's, it's but like everybody gone. knows, everybody like especially our oh, age yeah. knows yeah, yeah, about yeah, Guitar Hero. Yeah, yeah. But when the yeah. first one came out, like you said, it was like, what the heck is this? Like unless yeah, was, you were it really fresh, it was one of those fresh games. Yeah, unless you were really following it before it came out, you wouldn't have even known and, about it. It started, it spawned the beginning of the music games, right? Yeah. So DDR was doing his DDR thing. I'm not And that's kind of different, though, too, really. DDR is completely different, yeah. right? That's its own thing. It's what still I a mean rhythm is, game, but it's it's like an instrument. You had Guitar Hero, which then spawned Donkey Konga, which <laughs> also spawned, uh, Donkey what was Kong, the yeah. other drum game? Uh, Taiko Drum Master, baby. Hold on. I still have my Taiko Drum... <laughs> There it is. <laughs> From P- PS2. Dude, I played right? the shit out of this. Yeah. You hit it with some fucking sticks. Where are my sticks, bro? You had that. You had Tycho. <laughs> <laughs> you had, um, eventually you had Rock Band. So you ended up yeah. having the entire ensemble. And then but Guitar Hero started of... adding like Rock Bandy instruments and you had too, didn't it? DJ Hero was a game that was right. created. And that's kind of where like, it started going. And it down, started going. Yeah. Well, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, but I mean, like to think about like a game like that, that's, that's, that's where it got its beginnings. Right. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, the only other game I had on my list was Okami. And Ooh, I can't remember. Either, one. I can't remember if you played that. Yeah, or I did. If, yeah. If, okay. Somebody in my like, sort I never personally played it. Someone if in my you... circle played it. If you, if you like, like that Zelda, kind of like, if you like yeah. Zelda style, like 3D Zelda games, you'd yeah. love Okami. And it was, it was apparently supposed to be just a phenomenal story too. So, yeah, uh, that kind of, I like that kind of like hand drawn, like that painted mm-hmm. kind of. They re-released it on the had. Wii, and I feel like that's the way to play it because. Oh, like you got the yeah the, the, instead the of waggle controls because you had to use the. Well, the no, because because you you draw like the kanji or you draw whatever on the right. screen. Right. And you had to do it with the analog stick, and it was super oh, awkward yeah, that would take on the PS2, right? Uh, okay. But on the on the Wii, like you could just go like that, and then nice, and then it would do its thing. But as far as like Guitar Hero, Hero, that's back when like, uh, like so before Guitar Hero, we were in a band. It was me, yourself, and Finny. Finn Meister. And then after you moved away, it was me, uh, Finny, and your younger brother. And then it was me. Uh, bosley and your younger brother but anyways me and your younger brother also had like a side band and we would just do like fun songs half of them like improv and it was actually the name of the band was actually kind of named after one of the like made up characters from i think it was the first guitar (laughs) hero right yeah yeah we were called johnny napalm and the flaming erection johnny napalm yeah and johnny napalm was like one of the guitar hero characters or something like that yeah but it's a nice little bit of trivia. A little there. bit of trivia, yet yeah, for all the trivia masters out there. That I, I mean, I what what do you say? The PS2 has to be one of the best selling consoles. Was it? It not? is. I was think it? it is. It's still. I think the it's most like successful the best, console most of successful all time. console of all time. What do you say about the system? I mean, everybody it had, had one, and it had right? everything, like every it genre was, covered. It was everything. fantastic. The only way they could have possibly made it better. Right, would have been to have four controller slots on it. Yeah, but, but they to had be a perfectly multi-tap. honest. Well, and to be perfectly honest with you, how many times were we actually playing four player games at that point? Yeah, no doubt. Right, yeah. the Xbox, the OG Xbox had four controller ports on mm-hmm. it, right? And they were almost never used. There was Except not a lot of games. parties, but we'll get to that in the Xbox episode. That's right. There was <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't a lot of games. There was some games, but I mean, yeah. it was definitely not the the kind of standard that I yeah. hoped. That they hoped that it would be for them to put the money into creating that. This is also, by the way, the end of wired controllers. Too, yes. Yeah. Right. 
This is there. the final set of consoles that uses wired controllers. From from this point forward, you had the GameCube that brought out the WaveBird, yeah. and then then both Xbox and PlayStation tried to mimic that yeah, with third party controllers. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. Theirs weren't nearly as good. As it the wasn't WaveBird. official controllers, but. And then you went the the PS3. I thought took so many steps backwards. Where the PS1 to the PS2 was a literal one hundred percent leap forward, yeah. and the PS2 to the PS3 almost felt like they took some steps backwards it instead. Does, really, right? yeah. Because they just they kind of hacked out some of the stuff. They made multiple versions of it. Blah 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 blah. I I truly and honestly think that the PS2 is the epitome of like a console launch, right? Like they oh, did yeah, they did a brand new system the right way. I don't think we'll ever actually see a console like that ever again. I don't think so. Right? Well, we never have before it either, which is what's crazy. Right. Like yeah. it's just it's insane how good the PS2 is and yeah. was. Um and and it it had it covered everything. Like th- mm-hmm. that's when um so like it did like all the started releasing like a lot of anthology games too like oh yeah because i got yeah. like all the fatal fury games you could get like all the fatal fury special and then real yeah. about and all that and then like all the king of fighter games and like it was yeah. dude i was like in was fighting good. game heaven at that time absolutely um and then that was also kind of i remember king of fighters got into that weird uh shitty i feel like all fighting games go through this where they have like we're like a successful 2d fighter and then they make a shitty 3d fighter version of it Mm-hmm. And that was like uh, King of Fighters Maximum Impact one and two, and it was just awful. But it was just man. And then Mercenaries, you ever play those games back in the day? I I didn't play them, but uh, my younger brother had both Mercenaries one and two. Fuck, were they? And they good, were supposed man. to be really really good games. They're kind of like uh, it's like if you took Grand Theft Auto, but you play as a mercenary on like the yeah. North Korean South Korean border for the first right. one. And then you have, like, all these, like, factions, and you, there's, like, bounty hunts, and, like, you can help out other factions, and, man, it was so good. It was so good. So ahead of its time. And, like, the crazy thing is, is, like, there were all these games like this that had all this, like, creativity, and now everything's so, like, the same, I feel, like, with, mm-hmm. with modern games, right? Yeah, absolutely. Whereas so- PS2, they were, like, they were, like, fuck it, let's make it, let's do this. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, there there was there was no holds barred. They were they were just going for it across the board. And I mean, in the games that they were turning out were mostly quality games, right? Yeah, like I mean, absolutely. obviously you're going to have your your filler games shovel, every shovel, you're going to yeah. do that, right? But I mean, any of the like mainstay games, they were all quality. Every single one of them, yep. right? Like it was just quality, quality, quality. God of War, boom, right? Yeah. You had, so you many had series that things. are huge today started there or were inspired yeah. by that. Inspired era. by. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Dynamite. It's unbelievable. Like I said, what do you say? It's the best. It's, it is the best game console, in my opinion. I think it, it is, is. It is the best. Like, I, yeah. Like, I, here's the thing. I love the PS4. Yeah. And but a PS4 big, is really a good. strong thing that the PS4 has going for it is there's a lot of remastered mm-hmm. uh, PS2 games on it, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's adds to the library. The last thing I kind of wanted to talk about was how, um, like I've I've been a Dragon Quest fan like seemingly mm. all my life, but after Dragon Quest Four, the series kind of dropped off the map, right? Like after Dragon right. Warrior Four on the NES, for fuck's sakes. Right. Uh, it dropped off the map. Um, I've talked about it before. I kind of got into like action platformers like Mega Man and like Castlevania and stuff like that after that. Um, but it wasn't until and and uh, I I wouldn't have even gotten this game if it wasn't for. So let me back up a little bit. I was a huge Final Fantasy fan, right? So on the PS One, right. I got into Final Fantasy. Did not. So there was Dragon Warrior Seven. On the PS1, right. didn't know it existed. I don't think anybody did. It was like marketed terribly, uh, sure. just like it. The Dragon Quest series has been for like almost all of history, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't until so I and then, and then the PS2 came out, right? And I played Final Fantasy X, and it was awesome. Final Fantasy XI came out, and I was super disappointed because I didn't want to play an MMO. I an wanted MMO. It to be a yeah. single player experience. Yep. And then Final Fantasy XII. Uh, all these like trailers and stuff come out and it looked fantastic. It looked phenomenal. And then they announce 
this is like right after the Square Enix merger, right? And we talked, we kind of talked about earlier in this podcast how Square mm-hmm. Enix is at an all time low. Well, the yep. last time they're at an all time low, it led to the Square Enix merger because right. Squ- Square would have gone out of business. They right? would have died. Yep. Yeah, that was the end of it. And all of a sudden, this is like the perfect thing for me as a as a old school Dragon Quest fan and as a at this time final huge Final Fantasy fan. Mm-hmm. They launch Dragon Quest VIII. Okay, so this is... I've never heard of Dragon Quest, right? It was always Dragon right. Warrior as a kid. Uh, right. And I hadn't played one since, like, fucking 1994, probably, right? On the NES. Exactly. Yeah. So years have gone by. This is, like, oh, probably, like, 10 years later, basically. I think maybe even longer. And there's they're releasing Dragon Quest uh, VIII, uh, Journey of the Cursed King... And the big selling feature is it comes with the demo for Final Fantasy XII included with okay. the game. So I'm like, well, fuck. I like JRPGs. Like, I want to play, the, I wanna play the, the demo. Yeah, I like JRPGs, so I'll give this game a try that I've never heard of. And I'll be one of the first people to experience Final Fantasy XII, right? Right. Yep. So I get the game. First thing I do, pop in the Final Fantasy XII demo, right? Of course, because that's what you bought it for. Yeah, yeah. And I played it, and it was great. And then I'm like, well, let's check out this Dragon Quest Might game. Might as well play this other game. <laughs> yeah, this game, this Dragon Quest game uh, from a series I've never heard of before, as far as I knew at the time. And I was like, fuck, man. I, I think I played it for, like, maybe, like, five hours straight. And I was like, man, something about this just gives me nostalgia. Like, there's so – something's, like, very familiar, familiar to me. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I couldn't figure it out for so long. You didn't get it on the intro? Dun, 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 no, because it was such a long time ago. Like, there's such okay. a huge time gap. Okay. And I would yeah, have been like... I guess like, we are what? We're talking what? A full 10, 12 years? At yeah, this point? I would have been in elementary school when I played Dragon Quest Four. Okay, and, fair enough. And this was like, I think after I had graduated high school, right? When I played okay. Dragon Quest Eight. So like, man, it was... Yeah, it was definitely after I graduated high school. And uh, I was like living on my own and everything. And... And yeah, there was like all these like the sounds obviously were clicking for me. Yeah. And I think I ended up just going on like Google or something and looking yeah. up Dragon Quest and then learning like, holy shit, dude, this is the series that I fucking grew up playing. This is like the newest <laughs> game in that series. And then I was like absolutely in love. And then I remember after I beat Dragon Quest Eight. I looked back and I was like, well, how many did I miss? Obviously, I missed four to eight. And then, right. and then five and six were never released here. And then as, as soon as I found out that seven was, but it was super rare because, like, they never marketed it. Um, right. And I remember spending, and this was back when, like, you could get retro games or PS1 games for dirt for, like, cheap. like, dirt, dirt cheap. Yeah, yeah, I remember spending $74 on Final or no on way. Dragon Quest Seven On and, a used copy. Yeah. And, it, no, I think it was actually, it was, I think, sealed. Oh, it was sealed. Yeah, okay. but seventy four dollars was a lot for a That's PS one game at that. That is time, a lot because right? other, the other games at that, that would have been what forty bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I was like, whatever, I'm gonna play it. And dude, Dragon Quest Seven blew my mind on the PS one. Like that was <laughs> like if you took Chrono Final Fantasy Seven is basically if you take or sorry Dragon Quest Seven is if you took Chrono Trigger, and but every all the like tr- time travel stuff like actually really matters every time. Oh, okay. Cuz like the whole premise is that there's like one island in the whole world and you go uh, through this like wormhole accidentally and you're in this whole new land and you're like what the heck is this? I'm in some other world. And then you end up preventing this like volcano from wiping out this like country. And then you go back through the wormhole and everyone's freaking out cuz this new island appeared in the world. And, okay. Yeah. So it's like you're actually like preventing these countries from being destroyed every time you go back, but but the first time it happens, you don't realize you're going back in time. Right, right. Right. So it's like it's so well done, and it's such a long game, but it's so like engrossing and like engaging, and like you just want to explore everything and love help it. everyone, and that's what really got me back into the series. And then after that, I just remember playing replaying dragon warrior one on the nes because there was no like re-releases yet i didn't i wasn't right. huge into emulation at that time so i didn't know about like the the super famicom remakes um mm-hmm. so i played i remember playing dragon warrior again and then i played dragon warrior two and three for the first time and then i replayed four and i was like man 
because like four was like the bomb when I was in elementary right. school, right? And I was like, right. this one still fucking holds up, right? <laughs> and then and then I think I played eight again right after finishing right. Dragon Warrior Four. Because you're like, okay, this is it. I want to go. Yeah, it, it, I wanted to go into it fully feeling that like nostalgia connection because the first time yeah. I played eight, I was like, conf- it was like confused nostalgia or something. Well, yeah, hundred percent. And it's it's funny because because you're absolutely right about them not marketing it well because yeah. I had. If, if it weren't for you, right? Because you've always been a, a giant Dragon Quest fan. Mm-hmm. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have even known Dragon Quest existed until Dragon Quest XI. Right. right? Because I think Eleven out of the entire series... Oh, yeah, was promoted the is best. ...is, like, the most, like, well-known, yeah, right? Yeah. It's Dragon that Quest XI. That and Nine. That and Nine. Because they I, really, on I, the DS, even they nine, man? Nine a lot. No idea. Wouldn't oh, okay. have, still wouldn't have even heard about it. Because right? your younger brother like, actually had nine, and we played right. co-op for a bit. I remember. But he, but did he have nine because you told him about it? I don't know. I, I don't think remember. he did. It might. Be. I think. I think he did, and because that, and that's that's like I'm saying is like you you would have been like no you go I played Dragon Warrior for the first time because you're like you need to play this game it's yeah, fantastic yeah. it's a lot of fun. I, Dragon Quest Eleven is your Final Fantasy Seven right yeah. like that it's is game that of is all time. the. That is the famous one. Yeah. That is well, the eight, one. Well, that... eight, eight might be more famous, but it's possible. But eleven's right up there. But like everybody knows that this game exists. That's yeah. that's kind of what oh, I'm getting absolutely. at, right? And so to have to have that to get to the back to the PS2 to have that kind of kickoff point again. Yeah. With with that because I think from that point forward, from eight, they had some success, yeah. and they were like, okay we're gonna we could do something with this game yeah. and then all of a sudden now they're flying again right yeah. um that's that's it that's amazing right yeah. uh i i i like i said there's no way i would have never known about dragon quest 7 i would have never known about any of these dragon quest games um it's a shame that they don't advertise them better and yeah. so i am looking forward to eventually trying 7 and 8 and playing them right yeah um and then the last thing I wanted to mention was the Star Wars Battlefront games on the PS2. Mm, I forgot about those games. So those were fucking fun. good, dude. Couch co-op. Yeah, dude. You can the play epitome, through the whole The epitome story. of couch co-op at yeah, that point. Yeah, they really, yeah. I feel like, yeah. And then the they PS- tried to re-release them. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I don't think they did very the second well one. Like movies. they fixed with like all the, they, they took all the stupid uh, loot box stuff out, but. Yeah. No, I mean like they. they oh, the right, the re-releases, like yeah, the they remasters, the classic ones. Yeah, I think, but then they, they kind of they botched, botched it. I think they fixed bit. it now. I think they patched. Probably the they out. usually do, but they usually do. But that's that's again just reasons such a why not to shit stain on the one. Reputation. Why you should never buy games day one. Like forget day yeah. one. You're gonna let other people make those mistakes. Yeah, You're gonna no sit doubt. back and wait till they get fixed. Look at what they did to Crystal Chronicles. Yeah, they still haven't fixed that. Like that's just they just ruined it. Right. And I'm glad I've, that we ended up not buying it because yeah, of that. Yeah, same. I've had people say, like, I mean, people say it all the time, that they want, that they're like, we want Dragon Quest Nine on the Switch. And I'm like, I do, but I think they would fuck up the online thing like they did with Crystal yeah. Chronicles. And then yeah. it would be, like, relatively unplayable. For sure. Not to mention Nintendo's online. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Not great. But, yeah, I feel like the PS2... For a couch co-op, that was kind of the pinnacle there. As that well. was the way to go. Yeah, yeah, Other than yeah. Because like I mean, from of from rage on the Genesis, but from this point forward, we're into online, always online consoles, and some, right? Yeah, and then some, uh, like PS3 games and stuff like that, were only online co-op. Only this online. This is where that kind of started. Was like the PS3 era. Yeah, yeah. But... The dawn, the dawn of the unplayable games. Yeah. Right. Like, or, if, or the if, D- there's... on disc DLC. I yeah, remember like there's games. When people found games. that out for the first time, how many people oh, were like man. freaking the fuck out? It's insane. And now it's like normal. Dude. Yeah, it's just it's just how gaming works now, right? Yeah. Like day one DLC, season passes, and yeah. and launch. They they're selling you DLC before they even make it at remember, this point, yeah. right? I remember people boycotting like Capcom in the PS3 yeah. era because oh, of yeah. the on disc DLC. Like you bought the game, yeah. it's on the disc. You have it's to just pay locked. more to unlock it. Yeah. 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 It's 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 ridiculous, you know, like uh, we're when we when we jump here from PS2 into PS3, Xbox 360 and uh 
um, the Wii. Wii uh, it's it's going to be. DLC, but... <laughs> we didn't. Well, no, see, the, the funny thing was at that point, Nintendo was like, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah. We what, will sell you virtual what is console the games. Internet? I I, th I think I think Nintendo was 100% and they they were they were dynamite for making that decision. I think really, that's why a lot yeah. of people bought the Wii. Um but then the sw the Switch came along cuz they did the Wii, the Wii U and then the Switch. And yeah. even on the Switch they kind of started they were like we're not going to do DLC. Yeah. And then they're like we could make a lot of money with DLC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? But we they don't, don't do it to, to the Mario extent as like other, well, I guess uh, the Mario Kart one. They they is do they do so much it. they do yeah. so much DLC. They're like, we don't need to make Mario Kart Nine. We'll just sell you a bunch of the old courses for yeah. sixty bucks. What's kind of no problem. What's kind of funny is like now that you put it that way, I feel like Nintendo now is hitting what like all other gaming hit at the tail end of the PS3. Era. Yeah, they're always a little bit behind. <laughs> yeah, but they're hitting that like everything's dlc and like yeah. but they're hitting it now whereas everyone yeah. else hit it on like the tail end of that ps3 era mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's sad to see right it's sad to see games like yeah. pokemon with the freaking dlc yeah. packs in them right like it's just it's stuff like that where you wouldn't have you would have hoped that they would have gone past it but i mean that's the i don't know something that's something goes, for a future yeah, topic I guess. I guess too but the the ps2 they did it right man it i i console. really think thinking thinking back um they definitely i i would have i would have said that the xbox was better but i mean that's only because i had one right yeah. but i mean thinking back to just even the the improvement over the ps1 alone oh, let yeah. alone what you got for that ps2 the price point of that ps2 the game selection of that ps2 you had a dvd player too, like right? everything everything about it they did correctly the only yeah. thing that sucked about the dvd players you had to use the controller to control right. it unless you they bought, didn't yeah unless they you didn't bought make the remote. a remote i never had yeah. one but i always wanted one because the X, it's so annoying to use the xbox the... 360 came with a remote in the box oh really and then they ended up scrapping that oh. because obviously that's how it works right so. yeah but yeah, next uh, next episode will be on the original Xbox, which I didn't have a whole lot of experience mm -hmm. with. Um, that was, other than that was I, my first owned console, my my really, hey? owned like where I I was the owner of that console. That was the first one. Um, yeah, it was good. That'll a be lot a of good fun one memories. because yeah, I had the only experience I had was like playing with you and Finny mm -hmm. and going to like LAN parties and stuff, which was oh, something yeah. like I had never done until like no. like Halo and shit like that. So much so. fun, yeah. If, so you, if you guys enjoy these podcasts, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all, check out Throw all the past thumbs. ones. we got a ton of them. Uh, check us out on Twitch. I'm at twitch.tv slash dookie03. Twitch.tv slash DG online. It's probably right here. Do the things. Click the things. Click comment. The things. Tell, us, thumbs. tell us your uh, first experiences with the PS2. Mm. Um, some of your first tell games, your favorite, favorite PS2 games. games. I want to hear your favorite games on the PS2 because I have a PS2 sitting right over there. I wouldn't mind playing some games. I bought a copy of Burnout Revenge oh, to yeah. play, and then I was like, to play on stream, and I was like, can't play that on stream because copyright turn... music. Yeah, you can turn, you can toggle the music off. I but know, then all you but hear the is... music is mm -hmm. like it's part the of the music experience. Was part of the game. Yeah, right? I think if you take the music out of Burnout, it's not the same. Just game like anymore. Crazy Taxi, right? You can't yeah. play Crazy Taxi without the off screen, off spring yeah, blaring just... in your head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching thank or listening, so and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a great one, everyone.